Today we're going to be taking a look at the Z-axis assembly, which is basically some rods and lead screws and stepper motors that allow the bed to move up and down. It comprises lots of little parts, so I've done a few of them already, which you can already see on the frame. But I'll take you through the process of doing them, and I'll do a couple on camera. So starting with one of these, you just, as normal, try and put the nut in the back. And if you're still having problems, take a screw, put it through, pull it in, and push it. Oh, make sure it's lined up, and pull it through. So that should be now embedded sort of nicely in there. And you can just take the correct screw, which is listed on the drawing, screw that into the end. And then if you're using nylock, remember it's a little bit tighter to tighten into the nylon. But you don't wanna, you don't wanna shut this part yet because you've gotta get your steel rod in there. So, I mean, that's easy for those. So let's do another one. It's up here. So, Maybe long screw from the back or the front, whichever you want to look at it. Through there, that through there, take that out and put that in. Tighten it down. Oops. And that should be it. Those are very simple. So the next thing we want to look at is the stepper motor sort of assembly, which comprises obviously of a stepper motor, a bracket, some screws, and one of these things. So the way we're going to get on with this is firstly attaching the bracket to the stepper motor, which is four screws and four washers. The reason I've used washers for this and not really very many other places, in fact, I don't think I've used them anywhere else, is simply because a lot of the, well, all the bed weight is taken by the stepper motors. Obviously the lead screws are what drive the motion and therefore also what hold the weight. The lead screws go straight to the motors and the motors go straight to the frame. So these are holding a lot of weight and I didn't want to hold all that weight on this small head of the screw. So these washers just help spread the load a bit across the plastic. So now we want to get this on. So hopefully you bought stepper motors with a D shaft. So there's a there's a flat section on the shaft. Hopefully you can see that. So for the coupler, you want to obviously line up one of your screws with that D shaft. And with regards to height, you want to get it well about there. So what you're looking to do is get this, well, inside here, you'll see there's a step. It's sort of five mil up to about here, and then it's eight mil the rest of the way. You don't want to sit it right at the top because you then, well, you could, but you're losing a lot of Z height by having this so high. You want to get this as low as possible while still having enough room for your lead screw. And when you put the lead screw in, you want to be able to make sure that they're going to contact like this. By doing that, it means that as the bed puts its load into the lead screw, it can't go up and down. It's solid there and it won't move from that position vertically. If you have them offset like this, you can see the spring in the coupler will allow it to move like that, which is obviously going to change your bed height relative to the nozzle and thus give you undesirable printing results. So I'm just going to put this on fairly roughly. I think about there will do. So now we've got a second one of those, we can start putting things on the frame. Now that you can see the whole frame, you'll be able to see where these motors are sitting. They're both identical and you can trim the wires down afterwards when you get them around the right length that you want. So I'm going to put, which one am I going to put in where? Uh, I'll put this one in this side, not that it matters obviously and this one in this side. I'm just going to be assembling mine into the slot nuts that are already in the frame. Because I've already had this in, they're already in approximately the right place. So they're in sort of that configuration. Two there and two there. These are four.
Now, don't worry too much about the position at the moment, it can slide around, so as long as it's on there, it's on there and it's ready to go. The other side is obviously assembled just the same. Now that we've got both the stepper motors in, make sure the wire's obviously coming out the back. I mean, it doesn't matter, you can move it around. We're gonna go ahead and put in these brackets. So the bracket orientation is important, so you wanna make sure that this flat side goes towards, sort of, when it's at the bottom, it goes towards the middle, and when it's at the top, it points downwards. So this way when it's at the bottom, and this way when it's at the top. Hopefully that should be fairly clear. You should bear in mind during assembly that the shaft is not central to the holes, so it's offset from the middle. So when you're trying to align everything, don't try and align it to the edge of a bracket, top and bottom, because they will be in slightly different places relative to the shaft. If it doesn't make sense now, it might make sense when you start aligning everything. If it doesn't make sense at all, and you manage to get it straight anyway, then obviously it didn't really matter. So there are eight of these in total. So obviously this one's this way, the top one goes that way, and they sort of meet like that. Aha, that's a good way to explain it. Look, this. so if I line up this hole vertically all the way through, you can see that the brackets are different each side. If I, hold, hold, if I line up the bracket at each edge, then the holes are not aligned. So that's just something to bear in mind when assembling these brackets together. Now that we've assembled all the brackets to the frame, we just need to get a couple of these rods in place and the bed. So you wanna make sure that these are not aligned up, otherwise these are gonna be a bit difficult to put in. You can just get it like that, up into the top bracket, and just sort of leave it hanging there for now. You should have all four and then sort of, you know, line them up a little bit. That's good for now. Now we wanna come and get the bed. So in the last video, we did the bed assembly and now is the point when you need it. In the last video, you might remember I said to take note of where you put this screw. Now this is where it's important. Your back is where these two belts are. Well, depends on the orientation, how you want the final orientation, if you want to access from the side or here, but for this, we're gonna be talking about it as if it's the back. So this at the back, this at the back, this goes in this way around. Oopsie daisy, oopsie daisy, oopsie daisy, and there we go. Don't get your camera stuck in the middle. So with the bed in place, we can sort of start to muscle things a little bit into place. Just get your rods and pull them down through there. This will help everything sort of become a little bit more square. At the moment, obviously, everything is quite loose, so, oh, see daisy. Well, nothing should come totally loose. It's fine that it moves around a bit. You could, if you want to, if you struggle doing it this way, or if it's a bit difficult doing it this way, you could, get your bars all aligned first, get them in position, and then add the bed. But the first time I tried it, I did it this way and it seemed to work okay. So I'm going to do it this way again. I've come across a bit of a snag here, so I just want to show you what I'm going to be doing about it. So you can see this rod doesn't quite come down into this plastic part. It's not alignment this way that's the problem, it's alignment this way. Now that can't go any further because it's limited by the bed. So we're just going to loosen off the screws in the bed slightly as it's designed to allow this to float forwards and backwards very slightly, depending on how everything else aligns. So I'm just gonna undo these screws very slightly. By doing that, I can just get this to go through. So you can see how that in there, hopefully there you can see how this rod now goes into the plastic part and then we can just tighten it up again. So at this point you should have a Z axis that moves up and down quite nicely. Mine does clip on this 
Uh, coupler at the end here, but I don't think you're going to have that problem. Your bearing holders are slightly different. So that's where we're going to leave this video. In the next video, we'll be getting the, the lead screws into these, lining up our Z-axis to try and make that as straight and sturdy as possible. And from then on, we'll obviously go into mounting the bed and electronics and things like that. So, thank you very much for watching. This has been CRT.